One couple. One murder. One disappearance. This is the murder of Diane Harlin and the disappearance of Hugh Harlin. Let's step into the cold. Morrow Bay, California, 13th of October, 1982. At Morrow Bay High School, members of the cross-country team gathered for practice. At one point during the three-mile course, the team had to run past a grove of cypress trees that separated the high school from the beach. As one of the coach's wives approached the trees, she made a gruesome discovery. Just ten feet away from the cross-country course, the partially nude body of a woman lay under the cypress trees. Her name was Diane Harlin and she was 43 years old. Diane was originally from San Francisco and she was born Diane Lenore Eakes on the 22nd of November 1938. She now lived on a ranch with her husband, Hugh, on Atascadero Road in Morrow Bay. She'd last been seen alive on the 2nd of October as she walked her two dogs, a black Afghan and a small brown dog, near the high school between 5.30pm and 6.30pm. Diane was familiar with the area and could often be seen walking her dogs there. Roughly an hour after she was last seen, her dogs were seen running away from the cypress trees and they eventually returned home without their owner around 11pm. The motive for the murder was believed to be sexual. It was determined that she had been strangled with a nylon dog leash that was three to four feet long, dark in colour and found close to her body. But due to how badly decomposed her body was, it wasn't possible to identify Diane right away. The police sent out a news media release with a description of the body and they asked for the public's help in identifying the body. When he learned about the discovery of a woman's body, Diane's husband, Hugh, contacted the police. He'd last seen her earlier that month, but the lack of contact from her didn't worry him. Hugh was used to Diane being gone for long periods of time, and because of this he didn't file a missing persons report. The police showed Hugh jewellery that had been found with the body, and Hugh confirmed that the pieces belonged to Diane. The police, of course, questioned Hugh. When his wife didn't come home, he thought that Diane had either gone to Colorado or had gone to visit her Swami, a Hindu religious teacher, in Orange County to seek comfort over the death of her Afghan dog, Ratzel. Diane believed that Ratzel's death was significant and Hugh believed that his wife could predict the future. He told the Telegram Tribune, She had a dream that if anything happened to Ratzel, she was also going to die soon. The Telegram Tribune also reported that Hugh felt the police were, quote, bringing disgrace, end quote, on Diane by investigating her death as a homicide. He believed that Diane died because of an aneurysm. She had been going through treatment for the condition and would occasionally forget to take her medication. Hugh did tell police that his wife's dogs had returned home without her and that they were wearing their leashes. When the police told him that Diane had been strangled with a dog leash, Hugh changed his statement, saying that when the dogs came home, they were without their leashes. Eventually, Hugh was ruled out as a suspect, although the police felt he knew more about his wife's murder than he was letting on. 
The police picked up on Hugh's attitude during the questioning and felt that Hugh was being intimidated by Diane's murderer. The police thought that Hugh feared the killer would come after him. Diane and Hugh were well known in Morrow Bay. Other residents of the town thought of the Harlins as an eccentric couple whose marriage could only be described as stormy. Diane kept to herself and town gossip led to her being nicknamed the Dog Lady. She would do things she knew would annoy her husband like serving him dog food for dinner. Hugh said that Diane cared more about her dogs than she did him and would spend all of their money on her pets. Hugh was a fisherman and would also work construction jobs. Hugh was from Morrow Bay and was born on the 31st of July 1935. He was seen as more sociable than his wife and would often be willing to help people out. He was 5 foot 8 inches tall and 140 pounds, but his grey hair and beard, blue eyes and the missing thumb and forefinger on his left hand helped Hugh stand out from the crowd. But on the 4th of November 1986, the 51 year old was reported missing. Hugh was last seen on the 1st of November. At 9am that day, Hugh had set off in his 1967 Chevrolet utility bed pickup truck for a friend's house in San Simeon, 27 miles north of Morrow Bay. He needed to borrow tools for a construction job he was scheduled to work in the area. By all accounts he arrived in San Simeon and completed the job. At 1.30pm Hugh began to make the journey home. He would never arrive back in Morrow Bay. Hugh's friend Steve Matthew soon received a call about Hugh from a mutual friend who lived in Cambria. Hugh's truck was parked next to the edge of Highway 1 and had been there for at least a day. Alarmed, Steve and another friend, Eddie Grimes, went to look at Hugh's truck. They found it parked on the edge of Highway 1, facing north. The location of the truck was also north of Burton Street. The keys to the truck were found nearby. The doors were locked and the hood was up. Hugh's glasses were found on the dashboard, along with a tin of tobacco and a tin of ragweed pot. Also found inside the truck were Hugh's lunch, sleeping bag, tools and backpack. His friends discovered that a fuel line had been removed and once the police became involved in Hugh's disappearance, a detective theorised that Hugh may have removed the fuel line himself after experiencing problems with it and then began walking to a service station. On the 8th of November, a search and rescue team searched the area around the truck, but nothing was found. Those who knew Hugh said he was a survivalist and would take off for long periods of time so he could live off the land but he would always inform someone of his plans. Not many believed that Hugh planned to vanish. Some even think that he met his end at the hands of Diane's murderer. At the time of Hugh's disappearance, Morrow Bay Police Chief Dave Howell and Morrow Bay City Councilman Jim Miller, who was once a detective, said that they believed Hugh was dead and that they had no way of knowing exactly what had happened to him. Speaking to the Telegram Tribune, Jim Miller said, He had a lot of friends and a lot of enemies. I think someone has taken care of him.